Welcome to the Wolf College Compass Use Instruction. We have our best four-step, most simple way of using a compass that we readily recommend for everybody, no matter what age, young or old. This is the way to go. The first thing you want to do is get a compass that's a map or orienteering compass. You can see through the plastic so you can see the map underneath when you lay it on the map, which will be the second part of this video. We're going to show how to put a compass on a map and find your way that direct way. This happens to be a Brunton in the $30, $35 range is really all you need if you're just a normal hiker, backpacker type person. If you, uh, you can do much more expensive ones and world compasses, or you can just for practice get a $10 compass. It's nice to have the mirror on there as well uh, for signaling in case of emergency, but it really helps for sighting. If you want accurate sighting, it's nice to have the mirror on there. So here's the four step process. It's great way to go. Step one is just simply input your data. Oh, I want to go, uh, say you want to find east. So you put E at the 12 o'clock position on your compass. Now if you have a mirrored compass that's on the side pointing toward the mirror, you have E pointing toward the mirror, that line going right through the middle of the mirror. Now if you don't have a mirror on there, it's going to look opposite. It's going to pretend the mirror is not there. There's going to be an arrow on your plastic part of the compass and you put the E toward that arrow. That's using it, holding it in the direct, correct direction. So step one is just input your data, putting your direction at the 12 o'clock position on the compass. Second step, this is the one, this one second and the fourth step is where everybody just sort of blows by, but this is how you get really accurate sighting, otherwise you'll be way off. Second step is hold the compass correctly. I know it sounds like a no-brainer, but every, so many people just don't do this, and so they get inaccurate. So hold it correctly where it's par par uh, parallel to the ground, completely flat. The floating magnetic needle inside there is absolutely free floating. There's no tilting this way or this way or anything like this. Most, most people accidentally hold it like this because they want to be looking at it. But the compass is not going to work. It has to be absolutely flat. So that's the second step is to put it right in front of your chest, absolutely parallel to the ground. All right. Third step. Now you want to, and this might look a little funny, but really the best way to go is to move super, super slowly, looking at your um, compass until that red floating magnetic needle inside there, the red part of it, is pointing toward your declination. Just look up an internet search, declination, whatever your location happens to be. Here in the Seattle, Washington area, it's about 17 degrees east. and so. Uh, east of north and so what you want to do is just move like this really slowly so the compass can keep up with you and go until that red floating needle is pointing towards 17 east or whatever your declination happens to be so look on the, the uh, compass and you can see that around the edges usually that's where it's located on most compasses there are all the degree marks and so you have to find and figure out where 17 is in this case. When I'm just teaching kids, for instance, I just say, oh, just have a point toward the 20 that's close enough just to practice. But if you're going to really sight accurately, you really have to get a two degree compass like this where you can see down to really the individual degrees pretty much. So that's the third step is to uh, turn around until that floating magnetic needle is pointing toward your declination. Fourth step is another one everybody just misses. So in this case, I uh, input the data E, and uh, my floating magnetic needle is pointing toward 17. That means I am facing east. I know, think about it. So it's really, really easy. The floating magnetic needle is always pointing toward magnetic north. Now I'm pointing east because I have put that data in. Fourth step, everybody just blows by this as well. They go, oh, I'm facing east, and so they put a, they, they're looking at their compass and they start walking and they start turning. You can't look at the compass. You have to sight what you're going to be walking toward. So you want to put your compass straight out in front of you. I mean, absolutely straight out in front of you. Don't turn your chest anything. Just hold it absolutely perfectly. Sight over the, in the case of this, right over the top of the mirror. You can see the mirror has a little notch in it and you can sight with one eye straight over that, straight over your compass, everything lined up just absolutely perfectly and choose something furthest off in the distance that you want to walk toward. In this case, I'm facing east, I see a tree off about 400 yards way out there and so I would find that tree, put away my compass, 
and walk toward it. Don't look at your compass. All right, that's the four step method of using the compass. Super easy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put compass on the map. All right, let's go inside and do that. All right, we're back inside now and I'm going to show you how to put a compass on a map. Again, it's a really simple four step process, but there's a lot of things that will make your life a lot easier and make this really nice. Now, you can get a map, uh, of course, buy one, but nowadays you can also get it right off the internet, contour lines, a nice terrain map, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the easiest thing to do is say, for instance, go to Google and you want to, uh, you can put in here map is the first word and then you put your location and choose a location that you're really familiar with. So I'm going to put in here Fremont Peak Park in Seattle. And uh, this is what pops up, a little map off to the right of your area, usually. <laughs> Click on the map image and the maps come up. You can also choose maps right up here on the top of the Google search bar and then um, I'm going to click this out of here because I don't want that in the way now if you go over here to satellite um, click on it and if you're zoomed out far enough a feature called terrain should pop up but we're not zoomed out far enough so I'm going to zoom out one more time and then I'm going to go back there and there it is terrain pops up so I want to go to the terrain map so I can really learn and see where the, the intervals of the landscape are down here at the bottom left, this is sea level. That's pu part of Puget Sound there. It's the Ship Canal going from Puget Sound up into Lake Union. And this, um, between here and Fremont Peak Park, there are, there's quite an elevation gain. There are four contour lines leading up to this uh, darker contour line. It's probably hard to see those other contour lines. If you print it out on a really good printer, you will be able to see them. And of course, if you're in the wilderness, you wouldn't see all these roads and whatnot in the way as well. You pretend that they're not there. So at the 200 foot interval mark, you'll see a dark line. And these are the USGS maps that Google has now uh, put over on the top of their terrain map feature. And if you go up even further, it's going to go at more 40 foot intervals on these really light marking terrain uh, contour lines and that indicates going uphill. Well that's a whole nother video. What we want to do is print this out on a really good printer and those contour lines should pop out. Go to an area you're really familiar with or if you're teaching somebody else you really want to go to a place that they're familiar with and they can see the landscape features off in the distance. So here we are with the map. Okay, I'm going to take the computer out of the way. This is the printed out area. Down here is Fremont Peak Park and what you want to do is highlight the 40 foot interval contours so you can really see them. Um, if you buy a map, of course, you'll be able to see them a lot more easily. And then highlight in a different color, the 200. And then you can really make out, and if you're teaching somebody else, you can really make out what it is, where those contour features are. So you're standing right in Fremont Peak Park, and you should be able to see down to uh, the sea level or sea up to some other higher peaks and some buildings that might be on the map, that kind of thing. So what you want to do is now your four-step process. You want to take your compass and you put your compass, center of your compass, right over your position. You have to have the map and the compass lined up where the top of the compass is at the top or the north side of the map. Usually north is top on a map but not necessarily so you want to look and make sure that's the case. Always have your compass going the same direction as where north is. Alright so what you want to do is now put your map on there correctly spin the dial of your compass step 2 to where N is at the 12 o'clock position on your compass. So your position number one position your compass correctly on your map. Number two spin your compass dial so that N is at the top at the 12 o'clock position. Step three is get a string of some sort, this is a dental floss, and put the center of the dental floss right in the center of the compass and then put the other end where you want to go. In this case I want to go to Woodland Park and I'm not going to take the streets, I'm going to go overland. And so there we are, we have a line between your location right underneath the compass and the spot you want to go which is Woodland Park and you want to take a look from the very top, what is the degree that the string goes over? In this case, it's at 50 degrees. Okay, now that we know that the direction we want to travel 
is basically northeast or exactly 50 degrees from this position at uh, the park we're at now to the park where we want to go which is Woodland uh, Park. We go ahead and take off our compass off of our map. We can put our map away, take our compass and you want to spin the magnet, excuse me, to spin the dial, step one through four again if you've been using a compass, spin the dial until 50 is at the 12 o'clock position. Right there. Now we want, no, we want to go northeast, exactly 50 degrees, and that's step one. Step two, pull the compass just perfectly flat so that the floating magnetic needle works accurately, and so that it's right out in front of your chest. Step three is turn your body super slowly so the compass has a chance to keep up with you turning until the floating magnetic needle points toward your declination. In this case, Seattle, pretty close to 17 degrees uh, east. And so now the floating magnetic needle is pointing towards 17, and I am facing 50 degrees, which is really great. So then step four is hold it just perfectly out in front of you, sight the furthest thing off in the distance that you can see at 50, deg 50 degrees, when you chose that spot, you want to absolutely walk toward that thing that you saw and don't keep looking at your compass. All right, so for more practice on this, you can go to our uh, annual classes on navigation or take our five-day uh, Wolf College survival expedition, and uh, we'll practice a lot of good navigation orienteering as well as all the other survival skills. Thanks a lot for joining us.